So, just another quick follow-up video to the video uh, with the shaders, with the shader packs, with all the shaders in it. And this time, just like the first follow-up video, it's about the auto change. So, if I enable my shaders here and click them so I can see which one is on. The whole idea was about getting all these shaders and put them into all these folders and then see if we could overrule the auto change. And the last follow-up video, we overruled it with, with uh, something that was based on seconds, but someone asked, can we do it based on bars instead of beats, if you will? And uh, then I, I contacted uh, Loco Duck because I was thinking, well, Virtual DJ is counting beats, so it must be possible. And LocoDoc on the form is kind of the go-to guy when it comes to complex scripting. And he said, uh, well, yes, you can. Uh, what you have to do is you have to uh, to get the beat bar and then compare it to the number of beats you want and then set it. So he uh, suggested a script based on something like this. I'll move this a little bit. This script. So what does that do? Well, the first little trick here is just to keep the LEDs or the light on the on the skin uh, in sync, so we can see which one's on. But the rest of it is actually just a, another repeat start. This time it's really fast. Best means that it meshes all the time, and then it checks the uh, the uh, the beat bar, compares it to something. In this case, two because we want it to be every. Uh, two beats that we want to change. We're going to change that in a second. Compares it and then changes it if needed. And then there's a small little variable to keep in check that we only change it once during uh, each bar match, even though it'll have a lot of times because it's 25 milliseconds. So how does that actually work when we put it in? Let's name this two beats. So I start a track here. Oh, sorry. And I turn it on. And as you can see, it changes the shader every two beats. So let's make another one. See, well, this one, we want it to be four, so we'll call it four beats. And we need to say, well, this is button two. And make another one, say button three, and maybe eight beats, like that. Eight beats, and then finally we probably also want to be able to stop it again. So I'll just do a tiny bit of this. So we'll set that button to zero, and we'll do a repeat stop, and we don't need the rest of it, like that. So now we can turn off the track. We do two beats. Change it to four bits. Oh, eight bits. Like that, and we can stop it again. So stop, four beats. Two beats. And so on and so forth. And then uh, I was discussing uh, having a dial with LocoDoc and he said, well, man, maybe you want to use the virtual FX plugin. So what's that thing? Well. That's just another option of doing uh, basically the same thing, but if you want to dial with it. So well, let's try and install this thing called virtual effects. What is this? So I install it. And I look for it on the master effects because we want it as a master effect, we want it to work on all decks. Like 
this and I get the little setting page for it here. So what's this thing do? Well, it actually does nothing because it's actually a wrapper or a container that lets you execute script as a sound effect. And it has the little sending, the little GUI with the dial we want. So we're actually only gonna use this dial, but it can do a lot of them, as you can see. And then we're gonna see if we can make that do the same. So since this is just a container and you want it to do specific purposes, you probably want lots of them. So the first thing you usually do is you copy it. So if I go out into my sound effects folder, so documents, virtual DJ plugins, that means it's a 32-bit one, otherwise it would be say plugins 64, and sound effects. You can see I have my new virtual effects down here. And uh, I've already copied it into something called the AOVSS, short for Audio Only Visualization Shader Swap. And it has gotten an ini file, which is actually the script file that feeds it. So if I try to look at that one, you can see on the unstart down here, it has a ton of script. That's the script that's actually doing all of it. And it's kind of the script we just put on the buttons. There's just a lot more because it's gonna be fed by a dial. So it actually have to do all the all the length. And then we have this dial up here um, that sets it to whatever length we want. So now, if we in Little Juju instead look for the copy of it called the AOS VSS, and get the GUI for that one to get the actual dial. You say it's now four. So if I go back to video, get my shaders back and up here. Like that and start. And start the effect. It changes every four bars. And I can now dial it every eight out bars. Or maybe even down to one bar. Like that. So that's using the uh, virtual effects plugin with an ini file, only it's been uh, copied and renamed so we can do it over and over for all, for all the kinds of, of things we want to do. And remember, uh, the virtual effects plugin does not do anything on its own. You need uh, the ini file with the actual script in it. That's how it's meant to be used. And of course, I'm going to leave uh, the scripts uh, I've used in the description and also a link to zip file with this ini file so you can get this up and running yourself.